Welcome to my KTM video playlist. Today we are going to see the important two terms limiting friction and coefficient of friction. So let's see. Let's start with the first one limiting friction. Now consider this figure to understand the limiting friction. Consider that a body A weight W is lying on a rough horizontal body B. Here you can see as shown in figure A. So this is the initial condition that we have assumed to understand the limiting friction. So again the body A having weight W that is lying on a rough horizontal body B. In this position the body A is in equilibrium under the action of its own weight W and the normal reaction Rn that is by body B on A. So in this condition we can say the body is in equilibrium that's why the algebraic summation of all vertical forces is 0. So in another word you can say here there are only two forces so we can say Rn is equal to W. Now if a small horizontal force P1 is applied to the body A acting through its center of gravity here you can see as shown in figure B. Now see if you applied the P1 force at the center of the gravity then what happened? It does not move because of the frictional force which prevents the motion due to the irregularity between the surfaces. So very simple if you applied the P1 force having very small value then the body will not move because of there is a friction force which will oppose the motion of the body. This shows that the applied force P1 is exactly balanced by the force of the friction F1 acting in the opposite direction. So again there is no any movement of the body. So you can say the body is in equilibrium condition. So again the algebraic summation of all the horizontal forces is 0. That's why you can say P1 that is exactly equal to friction force F1. That's why here it is written F1 is equal to P1. If we now increase the applied force to P2 from the P1 as shown in this figure C, it is still found in equilibrium. That's why you can say again the friction force F2 that is exactly equal to P2 because of once again the body A is in equilibrium condition. This means that the force of the friction has also increased to a value F2 is equal to P2. Thus every time the effort is increased with the force of friction such that it becomes exactly equal to the applied force. Again refer this figure. Here we have applied the P1 force and that's why the friction force that is exactly equal to P1. Here we have increased a little bit value from P1 to P2. So again the friction force is produced and that is equal to P2. But here the very important thing. There is a limit beyond which the force of the friction cannot increase. As shown in the figure D. The maximum value of the friction force that is here exactly equal to the effort applied. So this is the maximum limit of the friction force. After this any increase in the applied effort will not lead to any further increase in the force of the friction as shown in figure E. So look at this figure carefully. If you increase the value of the effort from P to P plus delta P where delta P is a very small value of the P 
then the friction will not increase from P to P plus delta P, but that is exactly equal to the P only. So there is a limit of the frictional force and that is exactly equal to P. So again, here the force of the friction is initially P1, then it is increased to P2, again it is increased up to P, but after that it will not increase. So here you can say the frictional force having some limit. Thus the body A begins to move in the direction of the applied force because of here the friction force that is less than the applied effort and thus the body will move in the direction of the applied force. That means it will move in the right side. This maximum value of the friction force F which comes into play when a body just begins to slide over the surface of the other body that means body B is known as limiting friction of the force or simply you can say it is a limiting friction. It may be noted that when the applied force that means P is less than the limiting friction force F, the body remains at rest as in case of figure B, figure C and figure D. And thus the friction is called as static friction because of the body is in equilibrium that means at rest which may have any value between zero and limiting friction. Now next terminology coefficient of friction again consider this figure it is defined as the ratio of the limiting friction F to the normal reaction Rn between the two bodies. So here you know that Rn is the normal reaction and that is always perpendicular to the contacting surface. W is the self weight of the body A and if you applied the effort then obviously you know that the friction force will oppose the motion of the body and that is always in the opposite direction. So again, see carefully, coefficient of friction that is actually ratio of the limiting friction F to the normal reaction Rn. It is generally denoted by mu. So mathematically you can write coefficient of friction mu that is equal to F by Rn where F is the limiting friction and Rn is the normal reaction. Again you know that this is the force, so the unit of the force is in Newton, Rn is also normal reaction, so again the unit is Newton. So Newton, Newton will be cancelled, so you can understand the coefficient of friction is unitless. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video, press the like button to appreciate.